Welcome back to the channel guys. Today we're gonna to be doing the ultimate buyer's guide on the Lexus SC300 and 400 since they're about the same thing with a different engine in it. This episode kind of really hits home to me because I actually was about to buy one of these at one point in time. It was either the A86 or an SC300 five suit manual with 100,000 miles on it for 5K, which is an insane deal nowadays. Um, and I wish I could have got both, but I didn't have enough money. So I had to pick one or the other, I ended up picking the 86, um, but yeah, I did a bunch of research about this when I was buying the car and I did even more research now to bring you guys the ultimate buyer's guide so that when you check out this SC300, you know what to look for and get a good deal on it. In this video, we're gonna go over the differences between the years, the common problems these cars had, things that will add value to the car, and last but not least, my favorite part, the five rarest colors that this car had when it came out. And for this car, there is one color in particular that is so beautiful. So make sure to stay till the end of the video to figure out what that is. And also make sure to join the Discord down below if you like gaming and talking about cars because we do both of those in there. And uh, let's get into it. First generation SC ran from 1991 to 2000. So a pretty good nine year run. And it came with two different engines and they're both amazing engines. I mean, what better two engines can you put in a car? First one is the NA2JZ, not the one in the twin turbo Supra. <laughs> But it's still a great engine because it's super reliable and makes pretty good horsepower. The 2JZ made 225 horsepower with 220 foot-pounds of torque and at a 0 to 60 of 7.2 seconds if you opted for the automatic. Now if you got the manual version, it had a 0 to 60 of 6.8 seconds. So if you want the fastest SC300, definitely get a manual. But I do have to let you know that they only made 3,883 of these. So they are quite rare. In 97, the 2JZ got some revisions done to it and the horsepower went from 225 to 220 but for that compromise you got an extra 10 pounds of torque so now it's 220 and 220 across the board and now for the other engine the 1UZ probably the only motor I'd ever think about swapping into the 86 the 1UZ made 250 horsepower with 260 foot pounds of torque and had a 0 to 60 of 6.7 seconds but in 1997, they added 10 more horsepower. In 1998 and plus, had 290 horsepower and had a fifth gear for the automatic transmission. The 0 to 60 of the 290 horsepower version of the 1UZ had a 0 to 60 of 6.2 seconds. If I was going to be buying one of these, the SC300 or the SC400, which one would I choose? I definitely choose the SC400 over the 300 just because it has more power stock. And the reason why I would pick the 1UZ over the 2J for being stock is obviously it has more power, but the 1UZ has less aftermarket support. So if I wanted to mod it out and you know make say 500 horsepower or something the 2JZ would be more inclined to do that than the 1UZ and a couple years to note when looking for these cars if you have special requirements is that if you want OBD1 make sure to get before 95 and if you want OBD2 get after 96. 97 was the last year for a five speed and that year they only made 120 of them so um, getting one of those is pretty rare. And last but not least, in 1998, the 2J got VVTi and coil packs, and that's why the horsepower numbers changed that year. And now let's get into the most common problems you should know before checking one of these out so you don't get your ass handed to you with a bunch of problems as soon as you get home with the car. First, we'll do the common problems that both of these models have, and then we'll do a little subcategory of specific problems for the SC300 and the SC400. One of the first problems you should look for when checking out the car you're wanting to buy is when you open up the door, check the door hinges. They tend to sag because the door is just so long and heavy. And while it's not difficult to fix, um, the actual hinges are so expensive. They are $489 a piece from Toyota if you don't want to go secondhand. Yeah, make sure they don't sag or else definitely talk to the owner about lowering that price because that is insane. And while we're on the topic of the doors, let's talk about the window regulators. These often go bad because the car is old. And for some reason, Toyota makes really good motors. But when it comes to window motors, sometimes they're lacking on those. So they go bad and it's a pain in the ass to fix. Another one of the most notorious problems that these cars have is that the cluster stops lighting up. And this isn't just because of a bad bulb. The owner of the car that you're looking at might say it's a bad bulb, but do not trust them. If it is a bad bulb, let's go to AutoZone right now and fix this because it might not be the bulb and instead it might be a bad circuit on the cluster, which really sucks because either you have to get it sent out to get fixed or you have to find another one that is second hand and who knows how long that one will last before it goes bad, just like the one that's already in the car. And the only other capacitors that you have to watch out for on these cars is the ECU capacitors which is a big one. I mean, it, it, it's not something small. So just because I said it's the only other one you have to watch out for, it doesn't mean that it's pretty easy to fix. I mean, if these go bad, they can leak onto the rest of the ECU, causing the whole ECU to go bad. And that is just 
no good at all so if you get a se 300 one of the first things you should do is open up that ecu and check if the capacitor is good if the capacitors are not and they're leaking but the ecu hasn't been destroyed yet make sure to get that sent out right away because it is better to fix it now than wait and have to find a whole new ecu and both of these engines do operate on a timing belt so make sure to ask the owner of the car when it was last done because if it hasn't been done in like the last 80,000 miles it is on the brink of destruction so you better make sure to replace that right as you get it and also haggle down that price because he hasn't done it in a while and the maintenance is not upkept now an easy way to get a steal on one of these cars is that if you see one of these on the market and it says the fuel pump isn't running or it needs a fuel pump it might not even need a fuel pump and it's just not getting the 12 volts it needs to run which is somewhat common in these cars so an easy way to fix this is just running a wire straight from the battery to the fuel pump and that way it will get 12 volts all the time and you'll be good another great way to haggle down the price a little bit more on the car you're looking at is check the air vents or cracks on the plastic trim because of the frequent change in temperature from hot to cold hot to cold they become brittle and end up cracking on the 1993 to 96 models this can potentially end up to be costly uh, because they're like $300 to replace them because of the integrated passenger airbag and talk about things getting brittle another thing that you want to look for that will get brittle over time and start to crack and leak is the coolant reservoir so make sure to check that out when you're looking at that car and the last common problem that fits both the sc300 and the sc400 is for my hot boys out there that like lowered cars if you're looking for an sc that is already lowered make sure that they move the wiring harness inside the fender because if that is not done, tire will scrape away the wiring harness and then you won't get power to your engine. It's a simple fix. All you have to do is unplug three connectors and route it around inside the engine bay into the car through a different hole in the firewall. And the best part is you don't need to extend it or anything like that. It is already long enough to do this. I don't know why they didn't do it from factory, but I bet you and me are both glad that it's a pretty easy fix. Now we're going to go into the common problems specific for the SC300, meaning the 2JZ. And pretty much there is nothing except oil leaks the oil pan sometimes leaks and the valve cover sometimes leak but overall the 2jz is bulletproof and it's one of the best engines that toyota ever made now let's go on to the sc400 still a great engine don't get me wrong but there are a couple problems that if you know about you'll be better equipped when you go look at one first and most prominent one for the sc400 and the 1uz is that the power steering pump tends to leak and if it hasn't been replaced recently, it will leak right on the alternator, causing the alternator to go bad too. So when you check out this car, make sure that it just does not leak. And if it does leak, make sure to get a discount. Not only because you have to fix the power steering pump, but also because the alternator potentially can go bad on the way home. Another thing is that the hydraulic fan for the radiator leaks. So the best thing to do is replace it with an electric fan. Nothing can leak out of an electric fan. So that's an easy, easy fix. It just costs a little bit of money. And although the 1UZ has a lot of places to leak from, as long as you just keep on topping up the oil, it's good. So just make sure the owner has been doing that if it does leak and you'll be good to go. Now that we got all the common problems out of the way, let's move on to the things that will add value to the car. So these are the parts that when you go see the car, or even in the pictures you're like man that is a super rare car or even a slightly rare car so first thing is the manual transmission like i said they only made 3883 of these so uh yeah they're pretty rare and um, they do fetch a pretty penny over the automatic even manual swaps go for a little bit more because you have to find the manual transmission from either the sd300 or the is300 and pretty much swap it all in there the bezel for the sc300 manual is pretty rare and so as a shift boot so those things always add value to the car if you're getting a manual transmission if you are the literally the luckiest person in the world um there was a rumor that the person in charge of making the sc made one one uz manual sc400 and that is pretty crazy obviously he probably has that stashed in some building in the toyota headquarters or something but that is crazy that would be a really cool thing to get another thing that is really cool both with the ice 300 and the sc 300 and sc 400 pretty much any lexus is back in the day you could get the lexus without the lexus so usually lexus comes with leather seats you know power seats and 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 sunroofs and stuff like that but if you were too broke to afford an SC300, but you still really, really wanted one, you could get one with claw seats and a slick top. And since those are so hard to come by, they do fetch a little bit more than if you had the sunroof and the leather seats. If I was buying one, I would want one with the sunroof, but leather seats, I hate those. I mean, SC seats in general always crack because they're leather, and if you have cloth seats, they last forever. And, you know, they're not so hot when you get in the car. And the last thing that'll add some value to the car is the 95 through 96 or the 97 plus taillights the 94 and below taillights uh just no one really likes them as much 
and so they don't go for as much money as say the lighter gems and that's pretty much all the things that will add value to the car obviously if the car is taken care of that's great and if it's in good condition but these are the things that will just add a little bit more value to the car if you see them and the guy doesn't know what he has and now on to my all-time favorite part of these videos is the five rarest colors you could get. So when you look at these cars and you find one of these that are in this color, you can just stand out a little bit more than the rest of the crowd. First on the list, and these are in no particular order just because I couldn't find the actual production numbers. These all just ran for either one year or two years is the teal mist metallic. And this is a beautiful color. It's a light blue. I mean, obviously it's a teal color, but it's just really a nice color. And it's almost like it's in between green and blue and it just fits the car so well because it looks like a luxury color and this only came in 1995 next on the list we have classic green pearl this was only made in 1997 and it is a like dark green but it's not so dark and in the light it just it just shines it's like light green during the day but in the night it's dark green and almost black and when you think of an SC300, I, I bet you would think of this color because it's just so luxurious with a classic green pearl exterior and a tan seat interior. Next, we got something that relates to Cinnabon, Cinnabar Red. And um, this is just the pretty much like normal red that you'd see around. But at the same time, this was only made for one year and it was made in 2000. So this is the last year they came out with the SC and they decided, I guess, to switch it up with a new type of red and I gotta say, it definitely does look good. It almost looks like a cherry apple red with the way it shines in the sun. And next, we got another red, except this one is the like maroonish type of color. This is called Baroque Red. Who the hell knows what Baroque is, but uh, this is definitely another one of those colors that seems just luxurious. All those darker shades of colors just look a lot better on a luxury car. And especially with that tan interior, it just makes the car stand out a lot. How many maroon cars do you see on the road nowadays? And especially if you get those gold badges that you could get on all the Lexuses back in the 90s, man, this car would stand out. And last but not least, We've got the number one rarest color that everybody wants that has an SC300, and that is Royal Sapphire Pearl. This is the color I was talking about earlier in the video that if you stay till the end, you can see this color because this color is just absolutely beautiful. I mean, it's like a bluish purple and it's just the perfect in between. And when you see one of these in good condition, you just can't help but stare. I was gonna get one of these cars. It would definitely be RSP. Uh, unfortunately, they didn't make too many of them, obviously, because this is the rarest. I wouldn't think of this to be on any Toyota or even a luxury car because it just, it kind of looks youthful in a way to where, you know, no businessman adult that's paying $40,000 for a car in the 90s is going to get this color. This looks like a color that you get if you're racing down the street. And that's why I love it. It just, it just looks so out of place, but looks so beautiful at the same time. And this is definitely the color I'd get for this car. So if you guys enjoyed this video, please like and subscribe if you're new. Join the Discord down below, and I'll see you guys in the next one.